Hello everybody, my name's Infinite Gamer, and today on this beautiful day I'm just enjoying uh, a little bit of coffee right now. Uh, I don't know, don't know what I'm going to be doing today. Kind of boring around here. Ow! Oh man, I'm sorry! You shall pay for this by playing my game. <laughs> no! Cuphead is a game created by two brothers, Chad and Jared Moldenhaver. When they were growing up, the two brothers shared an interest in 1930s animation along with old NES video games. This would inspire them to make a game that took these two interests and combined them to make Cuphead. Their first attempt to make a game similar to Cuphead happened in the 2000s, but due to technical limitation, it would soon be scrapped. Development for Cuphead wouldn't truly begin until 2010. The brothers saw the success of Super Meat Boy and wanted to try their hand at Cuphead once more. Three years later, the two brothers would establish MDHR Studios. At least I got an establishing date this time around, Cap Palm, I'm looking at you. The launch of MDHR Studios would coincide with the first teaser for Cuphead, where they would reveal that Cuphead would release in 2014. But as most of you would know, Cuphead would get delayed numerous times. In 2015, Cuphead would have another trailer presented at E3. Along with the trailer, the game also had an early playable demo. After getting feedback from all the playtesters, the developers knew that there was a lack of content in the game, so they decided to delay the game again in order to be able to expand their team and the overall content in the game. In order for this to be possible, the two brothers would have to remortgage their homes. After a couple more delays, Cuphead would have officially released on September 23rd, 2017. So, with all the delays and changes made during the development cycle, would Cuphead be worth the wait? Well, let's find out and jump into the world of Inkwell Isle. Cuphead is a run-and-gun platforming shoot 'em up where you will have to jump, dash, and parry your way through the stages. The main part of the game is the boss rush, where you will have to take on boss fight after boss fight in order to progress your way through the game. You will be taking on these bosses with all kinds of items, like shooters, charms, and supers. There's a catch though. You can only buy shooters and charms by playing the running gun levels. These levels are kind of like Mario levels where you're not trying to beat a boss, but you're trying to make it to the very end of the level. You can collect up to five coins in these levels that you can use at the Emporium where you can buy shooters and charms. First, let's talk about shooters in the game and how they will work in combat. The very first shooter you get is the Pea Shooter. This shooter is your default shooter. It has both default range and damage. It will be used most on bosses that have very basic attack patterns. Next up is the Chaser. The Chaser has maximum range and acts like a homing missile, tracking down the nearest enemy, making it so you don't have to aim at your targets. This shooter is great for bosses with chaotic attack patterns, but you should keep in mind that this shooter does less damage, making it harder to actually kill a boss with it. Third shooter on the list is the Spread Shot. The complete opposite to the chaser, this shooter has very little range and is quite difficult to aim, but it deals great amounts of damage, making this a great shooter for compact boss fights with more simple attack patterns. Shooter number four is the Lobber. As the name describes, it lobs all of its shots, making it more effective when you are above or near the top of an enemy. Now the fifth shooter is quite interesting. The roundabout is a pretty average shooter when shot towards your target, but if you fire it in the opposite direction, it gains a large amount of range. 
The final shooter is the charge shot. The more you charge up the shooter, the more damage it will deal. But it only can shoot one at a time, meaning you're going to have to decide if you should make a longer charge up or a shorter charge up. All these shooters have a unique X move. X moves can be performed once you've charged up one card in your super meter. So, as you've seen, there are a lot of different shooters in this game. Each one can be used in its own way, but the cool thing about Cuphead is you can build yourself a kit consisting of two shooters. That's right, you can equip up to two different shooters at a time. Remember when I said you could perform an X move if you have one card in your super meter? Well, supers can be performed when your super meter is completely full. Supers are special abilities that grant you an advantage in boss fights or in running gun levels. But you can't buy these supers. Instead, you have to find them around Inkwell Isle in hidden Molosseums. Inside these Molosseums is a legendary chalice trapped by pink ghosts that you have to parry in order to kill. Parries can only be performed on pink glowing objects in Cuphead, while in mid-air you will have to hit the jump button over a parryable object at the perfect time in order to pull one off. After saving the chalice, you give you one of three supers. Super number one is a huge milk splash that shoots horizontally and deals a huge chunk of damage. Super number two gives you invincibility, allowing you to take damage without losing any HP, but only for a brief moment, and I mean really brief. Super number three is a spirit version of yourself that spins around the battlefield, dealing damage to anything in its path. But before talking about charms, we're going to have to go to a quick commercial break. Are you having trouble parrying your foes? Then try pea sugar. This nifty little tree will make your first jump a parry, so no more getting caught off guard from enemy attacks. Wait, what's that? You're already a parrying master, you say? Well then, the whetstone is perfect for you, my friend. Sharpen your parry with the whetstone and hit foes with a devastating attack. Man, Dad, I keep dashing into things and it really hurts. Well, son, don't worry, because with this smoke bomb charm, you can dash through anything without taking damage. But, Dad, my arm's still broken. No problem, kiddo. With the heart charm, you'll be feeling better in no time. It will take your HP from 3 to 4. And if you're still wanting after that, take the twin heart charm, taking your health up to 5 HP. But don't forget, the more hearts you have, the less damage you do, son. Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling like you aren't getting enough out of your super meter? Well, introducing coffee. This will only keep you playing for hours on end, but your super meter will recharge on its own, allowing for more EX moves and supers to be used in battle. Call 5555555555 for coffee today. That's five 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 five. Coffee today. You can access all of your charms in the equip menu, but unlike the shooters, you can only have one charm at a time. All the charms are just passive ability. Now, different charms are better in certain bosses over others, so just have fun messing around with them until you find a setup that fits your playstyle. Last thing in the menu is a list that keeps track of all the bosses you have fought and what rank you got while fighting them. The ranking system works on a grading basis. On your first playthrough of the game, your max grade can only be an A+. You get this by killing a boss in a short amount of time, not taking any damage, parrying at least three times, and using six of your super cards. Once you beat the game, you will unlock an expert difficulty on all of the bosses, and you can attain an S rank on all of the bosses by doing the A plus requirements just on expert difficulty. Overall, the game is really difficult. The developers have compared the difficulty to an original NES game where you die and have to repeat your progress over and over again, which can be really frustrating. But overall, the game is pretty fair, and the more you play it, the better you will get at it. The only thing I will say is if you get impatient with these games, make sure you're taking breaks often, as this game can destroy your spirits. Now that I've covered every corner of the gameplay, let me read you a little story. One day, Cuphead and Mugman walked into a casino on Inkwell Isle. Well, little did the two cups know, but this casino would be owned by the devil himself. Cuphead and Mugman started on a winning streak, and the devil caught wind and decided 
to make this a little more interesting. If you two win the next round, you can have the whole casino. But if you lose, your souls are mine. Cuphead, blinded by greed, snatched the dice and gave him a roll. As Mugman stammered in horror as the dice landed. C -c 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 Cuphead, what have you done? The dice, done moving, stuck in the position of... Snake Eyes! Shouted the devil. Cuphead, shocked at what just happened, realizes what he's done. Your souls are mine, boys. Hand them over. <laughs> Mr. Devil, there's there's got to be another way, Cuphead stammered. The devil, thinking quickly, finds a job for the two boys. I have some runaway debtors who owe me their deeds. If you can go get them, I might consider letting you two boys keep your souls. Now get out! The devil kicking the boys out of the casino in quite a rude way. Now, the boys running down the path of which they came, trying to figure out what would be their next step. Come on, Monk Man! Elder Kettle should know what to do, Cuphead said. Arriving at Elder Kettle's house, tired and gasping, the two boys explained to Elder Kettle what had just happened. Well, you two boys sure have gotten yourselves into a lot of trouble. But I have just the thing for you two. Take this potion. It will help you wall up those awful debtors. So with that, Mugman and Cuphead headed out to collect some deeds for the devil. Cuphead is an amazing game. From the visuals to the sounds, this game is something right out of the 1930s. Thanks to the inspiration of old Fleischer and Disney cartoons, every asset in the game is hand-drawn and animated. Jake Clark and his team did an amazing job of selling the 1930s aesthetic while also keeping the animation smooth and work well with the gameplay. With the tight gameplay, the game makes you feel like you're in complete control of a chaotic entity which most cartoon characters are. And the graphics aren't the only thing to have a lot of work put into them. The music in this game is just phenomenal. Chris Madigan composed the music for Cuphead. He originally didn't want to make any music for Cuphead, but after the Persistent Brothers kept asking Chris, he finally agreed to compose music for Cuphead. The score is based off of 1930s cartoons using various brass instruments. This gives each boss jumps and jives, giving you an amazing beat to listen to while fighting each and every boss. And let me tell you, with each time you die, you will be glad to re-listen to every song over and over again. The music does a great job of being very chaotic and keeping you on your toes during boss level while they are throwing every little thing at you. Now time to talk about Cuphead's difficulty. This game is hard, but in a very unique way. It's hard, but it's not ridiculous. This game has a practice makes perfect mentality. The more you play, the better you will get. You will start to see yourself improve as you defeat every challenge in your way. But even then, there will be some bosses that are harder for players over others. Overall, Cuphead may be hard, but it's extremely fun and charming for a game that only costs around $20. I heavily recommend that you give it a try if you're looking for a fun shoot 'em up. Although, if you aren't a fan of shoot 'em ups, this game might not be something you're interested in. And if you've never played a shoot 'em up before, I think this game could be a great introduction to the genre as this was my first shoot 'em up. But keep in mind this is meant to be a really difficult game. So don't think that all shoot 'em ups will be this hard. Now, should you buy this game? Well, in my opinion, I think it's worth the full $20 price tag. I just can't stress enough that it's a bit more difficult than other games on the market, so you should keep that in mind when you're trying to make a decision when purchasing this game. But if you can get around the difficulty of this game, it is definitely worth a playthrough and will be tons of fun. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if, and if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And bat the bell if you want notifications for more of my uploads. And go check out the What Is playlist. And let me know if you guys want to see more What Is. Bye, guys.